Good morning, I'm Christine Johnson. I'm a Level 2 Coach Educator. We're making this short segment today, which we hope will be in a series. And today we're going to, we're going to show you the elements of a good introduction to a coaching session, as would be required in a NCIS coaching uh, training session or assessment. First of all, I have an assistant here. Thank you, Georgia. And uh, it's a good idea if you're going to have learning materials that you have an assistant who will hold them for you so you're not flapping material around. Coach should be appropriately and neatly dressed. Don't have spurs, have sun protection, have the clothing appropriate to your environment. I have three riders here that are known to me. Uh, and I have done a safety check of my environment to check that this is a safe a safe learning environment for today, part of the um, risk, risk assessment. So first of all, I will do an introduction to my riders. I'll state who I am and uh, my role, because that may not be entirely obvious to them that I'm their coach. So I'll start with the introduction. Good morning, riders. Good morning. I'm Christine. I'm going to be your coach this morning. If you'd like to just tell me your names uh, briefly, starting here. My name is Trish Riggle. Good morning, Trish. My name is Sarah. Good morning, Trish. Uh, Sarah. And my name's Lauren. And good morning, Lauren. So I've got Trish, Sarah, and Lauren. And by repeating their names three times, the likelihood of me remembering them is uh, improved. So I'm starting again with Trish, Sarah, and Lauren. They're the introduction. And then I'm going to go to step number two. And this is an important requirement for our insurance. Uh, are you aware that horse riding can be a high risk activity? Yes. And have you all signed a waiver? Yes, yes I have. Good. I want you to know that safety should be the foremost thing in your mind at all times. With this in mind, I'm going to move on to the safety stop or the emergency stop or the handbrake halt as it's sometimes known. Anyway, we're going to call it the safety stop today. And riders, if at any time you see me raise my hand like this, be sure to raise your hand high, not a little bit. Raise my hand like this and call whole ride halt. I want you to come quickly and safely to a halt because there may be some emergency or something that's going to affect the conducting of the lesson in a safe way. Good, so this brings us to the gear check and this is a very important component of your introduction. And I'll let the riders know, I'm going to conduct a gear check today for the safety and suitability of today's lesson, but the ongoing care and maintenance of your gear is your responsibility. So, first of all, I'm going to start with Trish and I'm going to ask her first, is your horse safe to approach, Trish? Yes, it is. Good. And knowing that, I'll approach in a uh, relaxed but confident way to the horse's shoulder, keeping my eye on his eye to see how he reacts to me. I want to show you first, without interacting with Trish, how I would methodically go through the gear check. So if I start with the horse's brow band, I want to make sure it's sitting in the pole. I check the buckles of the cheek strap, the cavison, the throat lash, two fingers under the cavison, not too tight with the cavison. I check the bit is fitting comfortably. There's a couple of little creases at the corners of his lips and it's not too small or too big or low in his mouth. Then I move my way methodically down the reins, checking the folds, the stitching, the stitching. When I get to here with the rings, it's imperative that they have stoppers on them. I want the rings to at least reach to the crest so that the rings or the running martingale doesn't impede that straight line elbow wrist bit for the rider's contact to the horse. Checking the breastplate that it's fitted appropriately, not too loose through here. It's fitting on his shoulders nicely. And then I get to this section and I have to decide will I do the rider or will I do the saddle. So in this case I'm going to do the rider first 
and I start with the top of the rider. Is that a safety approved helmet, Trish? Yes, it is. So I presume by that response it's a 3838 or an approved equivalent. Correct. The chin strap, can you move your head like that and just show me that the chin strap can't be pulled on over your chin? Well, not too bad. She's got sun protection, she's got gloves, she's neatly attired, no dangly earrings or jewellery. When I get down to her jodhpurs, they're good. She's got leggings, smooth sole, heel boot, no spurs. If she did have spurs, I would check that they were adjusted in the correct way. I'm checking the stirrup that she can fit a finger either side so that if she lifts her foot up, the, the stirrup doesn't isn't too small or too big. That's that now I've done the rider, so I'm <coughs> satisfied with that. I'm going to now go to the saddle. I can see that the saddle cloth fits either side with plenty. She's got some padding on here. I'm checking the clearance in the gullet. Two fingers through underneath that way and four that way, so it sits on the horse. Saddle cloth's pulled up into the gullet so there's clearance, it's not pinching on his wither. Now I need to check the girth points and the stirrup bar. And I'm going to ask Trish to put her leg forward of the saddle and clear, keep the horse's head straight. Thanks. Put this leg up there. I'm checking if there was a safety catch on the stirrup bar that it's down. I'm checking the whole of the stirrup isn't torn and the stitching isn't torn. Then I can check the girth points. They're not torn. The tension, always be careful checking the tension of the girth that you don't uh, find the horse is a bit girthy and nips at you. The buckle guard's in place and then I can ask her to put her foot back down. I'm happy with the position of that. The horse has two boots on and they're they're correctly fitted. So overall that gives me a good picture of this rider on this side and I would repeat it methodically the same way on the other side. You don't need to talk to your rider about the gear checking necessarily to the degree I did. You would use that opportunity to say for instance Trish uh, have you ridden this horse before? Yes I have. And have you ridden him in a group? Yes I have. And is he uh, happy to go in any position in the group? Yes. Doesn't get too fast or slow. No. And then I'd ask her in a, a more than a little bit closer uh, confidential way, is there anything going to affect your learning today? Because she might like to say something that's not public to the whole group. So Trish has shared with me mm. as the coach that she's a little hard of hearing in one ear. And so Trish, if at any time you can't hear me, just let me know. Um, because that can be a problem in windy conditions or a long way in the far corner of the um, arena. I do exactly the same process on the offside, so I don't miss anything. Um, with a whip, I would check that it's got the appropriate flapper, it's not too long, and I don't want to see loops around the rider's wrist because that can be a danger. And be careful to do everything on one side that you do on the other side. And then during the course of the videoing, I've done the same process of, of the introduction. I've done the same process with the other riders. And I've discovered, for instance, that Sarah has never ridden this horse before, but the horse is known to me. And Lauren is riding a chestnut thoroughbred mare who can get a little bit hot. So I have to consider where I'll place her in the ride. Being a mare, I'd prefer to have her at the tail. Uh, and I'll see how that goes throughout the lesson. But that would be how I would conduct the introduction to any training session. And obviously, the more proficient you are with these steps, thank you, the, uh, the quicker you come to be able to do that in a, in a quick and seamless way. Good, so thank you, riders. And now we're going to proceed with our lesson.